Okay. Hi guys. <clears throat> Here we go. Next adventures of Iggy, Phoebe, and Mima for my sweet Iggy and my sweet Phoebe. You ready? This is the story of how we first found out we have a pirate ship that we get to sail in. All right, here we go. The adventures of Iggy, Phoebe, and Mima have taken them all over the world. And the day they discovered they had their very own pirate ship to travel on was an exciting day indeed. The three of them were sitting on the purple velvet sofa in Mima's living room. Mima was reading to them from a book she'd written for her own children many years ago about a place called Charles Island off the coast of Milford, Connecticut. It is an island haunted by the dreaded ghost of Captain Kidd, who, legend says, buried some chests of treasure there when he was running from the law. Iggy was particularly fond of pirate stories, and without really thinking about it, he began to sing a song his Mima had taught him that was called, What Do You Do With a Drunken Sailor? Now, his mother thought it was an inappropriate song for a young boy, but Iggy liked it anyways, so he began to sing. And Mima and Phoebe May joined in, and when they had finished, the strangest thing had happened. Even strange for children who had become friends with dragons. Instead of being on the purple couch in the living room, the three of them were on a purple pirate ship. The ship itself was painted a deep violet purple, and the sails were a lovely lavender purple, and the steering wheel was bright yellow and was shaped like the shining sun. What happened, Iggy shouted. I, I don't know, said Mima, but look, I know that island. That's Charles Island. At least we know where we are. Iggy pointed to another ship in the distance. Hey, he said, that looks like Captain Hook's ship. How do you know, asked Phoebe. By the Jolly Roger above the crow's nest, Iggy said. And Iggy would know because he'd made his parents and Mima read him every book about Peter Pan to him. And he'd seen the movie Peter Pan a dozen times. And he was now so very glad that he'd been holding his favorite wooden sword, Scallywag, tightly in his fist when the sofa turned into a pirate ship because it was still there. And he at least had a weapon in case he needed it. They began to explore the ship to see if there was anything they could use in case they got into trouble. Because sometimes they did. And when they went below deck, they found a dozen cannons, six lined up on either side of the ship. They found the galley, which was the only place not painted some shade of purple. It was actually almost as many colors as Iggy's dragon, Ambrose. There were bunks built into the walls and chests filled with supplies. On each of the chests was painted the words, Property of Ambrose Agatha. Ambrose Agatha, Iggy said, is that the name of this ship? But Ambrose Agatha is the names of our dragons, Phoebe said. Do you think that means it's our ship? She asked, just a little breathless, because it was a really cool pirate ship. I don't know, Mima said, but look, that pirate ship is on the other side of the island and it looks like they're dropping anchor. I hope they aren't after kids' treasure. He hates it when people go snooping on his island. Iggy took a peek into the longboat, also purple with purple oars. Do you think we can row out to the island and see what they're up to, he asked. Sure, Mima said. I'd like to check in with my old friend Captain Kidd anyways. Let's figure out how to lower this thing into the water. Took a few tries, but they finally got it in the water. And when the three of them began to row towards the shore with the purple oars, they finally reached the beach pulled the boat way up onto the sand to keep it safe, and then they quietly walked into the wooded island. On the other side of the small island, another group had just landed and were on their way to try and find the buried treasure of Captain Kidd, and apparently they had a treasure map. Urgh, said Captain Hook. We should be right about at the spot where we need to dig. He counted out ten paces to where a huge old tree stood, pointed to the ground in front of it, and said, Dig here, to the crew members he had brought to the island with him. But Captain, one of them said, this treasure's cursed. Whenever anyone tries to dig it up, the ghost of Captain Kidd shows up and... Never you mind, bellowed Hook. You start digging if you know what's good for you. 
The two mateys began to dig, but it was obvious they did not want to. Hook mumbled under his breath. When they get the treasure and Kid shows up, he'll go after them. And then I'll get the treasure and run with it. That's what he was thinking. Meanwhile, Iggy, Phoebe, and Mima were hiking closer and closer. I hear something, Phoebe said. It sounds like someone digging, Iggy said. Shh, Mima said. Go very slowly. I think they're over there. And she pointed through the trees. The three of them tiptoed quietly through the dense brush until they finally saw, in a small clearing, the men. They crouched low to the ground behind some trees. Oh, they're in so much trouble, Mima whispered. Just watch. Moments later, they heard the sound of a shovel hitting metal. We've got it, one of the pirates shouted. Instead of rushing up to see, Hook backed up right towards where the family was hiding. And then, from the hole in the ground, billowed up a huge puff of blue smoke. Don't be afraid, Mima whispered. Kid and I are buddies. Just wait and be quiet. The cloud of smoke grew bigger and bigger, and then out of it stepped a huge, terrifying ghost of a pirate. Both children pushed in pretty close to their Mima right then. The pirate reached down and drew his sword from his scabbard and growled, Who is after me, treasure? The two pirates dropped their swords, screamed, and took off running, followed by the angry ghost. Why was he angry? Ha ha! Hook shouted, Now it's mine! He ran to the deep hole and peered over the edge. Now to get it out of there. Hmm. Now, Iggy isn't always as brave as some. But when he sees someone doing something like stealing another's treasure, he can be as brave as any. He leaped to his feet, brandishing his sword, scallywag, and ran right into the clearing. He was so fast that Hook didn't have time to notice him coming, and Iggy swung his wooden sword hard and whacked the pirate right in the booty. Hook fell forward into the pit with a yelp. Hey, what the? Hook said, standing up so he could just see over the top of the hole. Who are you? I'm just Iggy, Iggy replied, and you can't steal someone else's treasure. Mima and Phoebe had followed Iggy into the clearing. Hook tried to climb out, which wasn't easy for a pirate with a hook for one hand. Get him, Phoebe. Get him, Iggy, Phoebe shouted. Iggy whacked Hook on top of the head with scallywag, and he slipped back down into the pit. You stay in there till Kid gets back, Mima said. Shouldn't take long. And it didn't. Moments later, the huge pirate ghost returned, and he was clearly very, very angry. Arg! Kid shouted. Get ye away from me, treasure! Mima stepped forward. Captain, it's just me and my grandchildren. The scoundrel in the pit is the one you're after. Mima! Kid said. It's good to see ya. And you as well, Mima said. Hook tried to climb out of the pit again, and Iggy whacked him on top of the head again with scallywag. It wasn't me, it wasn't me, it was those other two scoundrels, Hook said. I know you too well, Kid said. You've been after me treasure for years. Kid reached down, grabbed Hook by the shirt, pulled him from the ground. He set him down and growled. Now what shall I do with you, you lousy vermin? Hook didn't give Kid much time to do anything. He turned and he ran as fast as his skinny legs could carry him. Kid didn't bother to chase him. He turned back to the little family who had watched over his treasure. Well, who do we have here, he asked. I'm just Iggy, said Iggy. And I'm Phoebe, said his sister, P-H-O-E-B-E. -E. Pleased to meet you, Kid said. Thank you for watching over my treasure. I have to cover this back up and be on my way. We can help, Iggy said. And he and Phoebe picked up the shovels the pirates had left behind, filled in the hole and stamped it down, then covered it with dirt and branches and rocks. Didn't look like anybody had been digging there at all. Thank you kindly, Kid said. If you ever need anything, feel free to call on me. I think it's time to get them home, Mima said. But we will be back, I think, now that we have our own pirate ship. Take the shovels with you, Kid said. No need to make it easy for the next one who tries to steal my booty. Mima herded her little ones through the woods and back out to where their longboat rested on the sand. They climbed in and rowed back out to the Ambrose Agatha. From the water, they could see her name painted in yellow on the bow of the boat. She really was a very pretty ship. Once they were back on board, Iggy and Phoebe stood looking at Mima. 
So how do we get home? Phoebe asked. I'm not sure, Mima said, but we will try to do it the same way we got here. What was that song you were singing, Iggy? Iggy burst out singing. What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? And Mima and Phoebe joined in, and before they were even done singing the first verse, they found themselves back in Mima's living room, sitting on the purple velvet couch. Oh, Iggy said, we're home. And a moment later he said, but I already miss our pirate ship. Don't worry about it, Mima said. Now that we've figured out how it works, I think we'll be able to get back at it again. Iggy opened up his mouth to start singing, but Mima clamped her hand over it. Not now, she said. Who wants graham crackers? And they all got off the purple couch and headed for the kitchen, talking about where they might want to go on their next adventure. Because, of course, there is always a next adventure. Sleep well, my babies. Mima loves you.